Golf News RI presents The Golf Dudes Podcast. Here are the dudes. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Golf Dudes Podcast. Thanks for joining us on this fine Thursday night. Very foggy out. But besides that, it's a good day. Mr. Rich, how are you doing today, buddy boy? Welcome to the Golf Dudes Podcast once again. Uh, what's going on there, Joe? Um, yeah, foggy. Uh, some of the snow is actually gone. Hopefully, it'll be gone by tomorrow. Um, Saturday supposed to be a little frigid, so hopefully the majority of the stuff goes away. But, um, yeah, we had a degenerate day today. It was a good day watching some golf at Laura's. Um, what's going on with you? Uh, well, it's been a fun week for sure. I figured it was going to be a, a crazy week in the world of pro- professional golf, and it was. And we're going to get to that because there's a lot of breaking stories and a lot of stuff going on. Apparently, uh, Brooks Kapka just took a big shot at Phil Mickelson. So I am looking at that on Twitter right now on Golf Digest right now. Yeah, so we'll get to that in one second. But first, we should tell you, if we want to be good partners in crime, that the Golf Dudes podcast is presented by Lynx Drinks. Lynx Drinks is best known for their transfusion in a can. A transfusion is vodka, ginger ale, and grape juice, all mixed up into one refreshing beverage. Look for Lynx Drinks at country clubs and liquor stores near you. And we know Lynx Drinks just killed it last week down at the PGA show. PJ Merchandise Show, I should say. So congrats to them. And we're looking forward to doing more with them come uh, summertime when we have a few, hopefully a few uh, projects planned with them going forward. So shout out to our guys at Link Strings. We had a crazy week on uh, in professional golf, as I projected that it could be, with the PGA Tour at Pebble Beach and then the Saudi International going on, obviously, overseas. Uh, and to start the week we put up, I actually re-edited not re-edited, but I edited a clip of our interview with Bob Harrig, uh, formerly of ESPN, apparently, now of Sports Illustrated. And I actually hit him today with a message congratulating him on the new gig, but that's neither here or there. Uh, but he's now at Sports Illustrated. Still come out with his Tiger Woods versus Phil Mickelson book. Uh, that It's actually available for pre-order today, uh, so make sure you get online and buy that. But anyway, um, I actually I re-edited our interview with Bob Harrig where he, he gave us that great clip that great response about the the battle that's ongoing. He probably gave the best answer you could possibly give, defended both sides, you know, uh, talked about both sides, you know, part of the whole thing. Now we get to this week, and uh, two, and may, I don't know, maybe your thought is different, but two major stories, uh, blockbuster stories that hit just over the last handful of hours. Last night we had the Phil Mickelson story uh, where he uh, – called the PGA Tour greedy, basically. And I have some of the quotes written down that we can get to in a second. So that was the number one thing that hit that we put up. And obviously, we haven't put up every single story. Obviously, there's all these things going on, but I, we try to uh, target the, the biggest ones. So I thought the Mickelson one was big last night. Then this morning, <coughs> excuse me, we had this story about uh, Bryson DeChambeau being offered a whopping $135 million dollars to be the face of the Super Golf League. And for those that are wondering, as we put in the article, the $135 million is more than Tiger Woods has made on the course his entire PGA Tour career. So uh, two whopping stories that I think serve as a jumping off point on this topic, and that's kind of where we start. Obviously, there's some local stuff going on as well. Uh, Kings Crossing is hosting a snow golf tournament next week, and and also Davis Chatfield uh, tees it up tomorrow for his final semester of college golf, but I really want to start with this PGA versus Saudi thing. I think, uh, as we've talked about before, and we have talked about this a bunch before and written about it, I think it's fascinating, the whole situation. But, Rich, uh, just to get your thoughts just on not on those two big-time stories that broke within the last day, but obviously there's some other uh, things going on with Lee Westwood, Ian Poulter, perhaps Justin Johnson. But your, your kind of overall thoughts on the whole situation then we'll get into some. I want to get into some of Phil's quotes as well. But just your thoughts on those two uh, blockbuster whopper uh, stories. So, um, like you said, um, as we were connecting for the for this uh, Zoom call, um, Brooks Kepka 
took to social media and uh, calls out Phil Mickelson for the greed comments, as you said, that happened this morning from your boy, Big Phil. Um, let's see. Germans are trolling. Um, so Mickelson, uh, I'm, now, I'm, now I'm paraphrasing from the uh, Golf Digest uh, uh, article that just came out. Um, uh, Mickelson was defiant in an interview with uh, Golf Digest's G- Golf Digest John Huggin regarding his beliefs in the PGA Tour as shortening his playing members over media rights. So the pretty much the 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 PGA Tour players when they sign on to a PGA contract, they they legit have no no rights to their media. Um, it's a multi-billion dollar deal that the PGA tour has. They, they have a ton of media rights over their players, which is, I mean, if you think about it from any other sports aspect, it's kind of insane. Um, so the players don't have access to their own media. If the tour wanted to end any threat now I'm paraphrasing, don't, uh, don't get me wrong. Um, if the tour wanted to end any threat from, from the Saudi tournament or anywhere else, um, they would just hand their media rights back to the players. Um, but they would rather throw 25 million here and 40 million there than give back rather um, roughly $20 billion in digital assets that they control over the players. Like, do, do, do you hear that kind of thing, Joe? $20 billion. Yeah, and then the other part of the, the actual... <laughs> it's absolutely the actual, insane. Uh, and... and- and Bob Harry explained this to us, which again, if you go back and watch that clip of the interview, I mean, the whole interview was obviously yep. amazing because it was just cool to hear his perspectives and hear his insight. But that part of it was truly fascinating because he talks about it's he, insane. He told it's us absolutely about, crazy. He, he told us about that, and then Phil talks about <coughs> Phil talks about how he when he plays in the match, this new charity, uh, I don't want to call it a gig. It's not a gig. This, this charity endeavor that they've been doing, five of them. He has, the, he has to pay the PGA Tour a billion dollars, basically, uh, to be able yep. to play in this tournament. He's got to play. He's got to pay them. A, the, the, he's got to pay them like a royalty just to play in something outside of the PGA. So, so I mean, what you know, yeah, you have the quotes. I have them written down here. Obviously, all that courtesy of Golf Digest. It was kind of weird. I wasn't sure if it was if that was a Mickelson press conference or if he just gave an exclusive interview. To Golf Digest, but nonetheless, we slighted them. It, it, whatever, it's, it's all good. Either way, he blasted the PGA Tour. Um, he said he's not sure where he's going from here, and he basically called them greedy. He says, this is type of obnoxious greed has me has really opened the door for opportunities elsewhere. So combine that with the Shambo news this morning again. The Shambo offered 135 million. Now the Shambo uh, should be noted. Uh, well, one on a journalism note. Uh, the, sh- the, the original source that broke that story is Sports Mail. On the, uh, on the, that broke the DeChambeau story is Sports Mail. I personally have never heard of Sports Mail. My th- I think that's a I think that's a UK a UK place a UK uh, website. I think. It, I mean, I'm sure that it is. Um, but my thinking was that uh, Golf Digest went with it. They wrote us. They cited they cited a story on using Sports Mail, and others have as well. So I figured. If Duff, if Duff Digest can cite, cite them, so can Golf News or I. But anyway. Uh, <laughs> so, so, <laughs> All right. So before before so, you go ahead, I would just want to see something because I'm just – I'm actually just looking at this article as we got on the air. Um, so it says – now, granted, citing Golf Digest, obviously. While Mickelson's comments have made headlines, at least one player, the aforementioned Kepka, is not buying them. At least that's what we can be surmised by Kepka's response to social media to the Mickelson story. Don't know if I'd be using the word greedy if I'm Phil. Kepka's account wrote on Instagram. So, Correct. I, dude, these guys, like, we, we talk, we've we been talking about this for the past, like, probably, probably, like, a couple months, but, like, um, actively in the past, like, week. Um, dude, I, I, think the, I think money talks and BS walks here. We, t- we talked about this all day today. I, I think a lot of these guys are sort of thinking about it. So we talked we talk about this um, as well. And again, this will be on the table for the entire show. Obviously, some of the local stuff we can get to down the road. But I think this is just the most fascinating <laughs> story right now in golf. And it's our responsibility to, to leave with the news. And I think this, at this moment, uh, will be the news. Uh, and the other thing I thought was interesting is, and just to... Um, so I, and I cited this in an article at the beginning of the week, 
that I sort of previewed what sh- was going, what I thought was going to be a fascinating week, and it certainly has turned into that. And it's, the week's not even over yet, amazingly. Um, uh, according, I know, right? It's only Thursday. <laughs> acor- according to uh, you know, fam- relatively famous golf writer Jason Sobel, uh, just one of the top ten players in the world are at Pebble Beach, right? Pebble Beach is the PGA Tour tournament this week, the AT and T at Pebble Beach. Obviously, a bunch of celebrities are there, including uh, Macklemore, Josh Allen, Jack Nicholson. Jack Nicholson, uh, I think Ray Romano is playing. Anyways, so nonetheless, it's Pebble Beach. That's all you need to know. And then there's three of the top 10 and six of the top 20 are over at the Saudi International. So that's really a huge statement on as far as what player, you know, what players think of the, the, two, the two sides, I believe. Because who would want to play Pebble Beach, you know, in theory? I mean, everybody <laughs> wants to play Pebble Beach, but not like in a, in a pro-am format, like, um, obviously if it's the U S open, obviously shout out to Gary Woodland. He won, he won the U S open at Pebble beach a couple of years ago, but like, I think that the players are trying to like, it, it, as much as this is a, um, a, what's it called? A, um, oh crap. Uh, a, not a play on words, but like, uh, something everybody says, I can't remember the, I can't remember the term. Um, but like, like, Players are trying to expand to other endeavors, whether it be money or better challenges or, you know, better endorsements. I mean, I, I, the, even though the PGA Tour has rights to these guys, these other guys kind of want to expand to other endeavors. Right. I mean, they want to have, like Mickelson said, they should have their own, you know, control of the media. Or their control own, of their well, how, they, how they want to be perceived. Absolutely. Their own media. And he, and he even... If you look further in that, in our article, but also in the obviously in the Golf Digest article, he even took a shot at the Netflix uh, series, which I thought was interesting. <laughs> and he just, said, I haven't gotten that far yet. And he I'm said, trying to read it. And he said, "quote Why hasn't golf had cameras and microphones on players and caddies? Because the players would not benefit. Only the tour. So players are just wearing them. Take this Netflix project that is underway. None of the players He's not are, wrong. None of the players are getting paid, but the tour is getting paid a lot of money." As is from Augusta, Netflix, you know, absolutely, yeah. As is Augusta, and he continues, as is Augusta National, and as is the USJ. But if the players had their own channel, maybe they put up their own content, and we start to see golf presented in a diff- in a more intimate way, or more intimately, I guess he says. And Joe, he, could, Joe, could you imagine a players a players only channel? How much would you pay to see all? All the majors, we'll we'll say the five majors. So I'll put I'll put uh, Sawgrass in there, the Players Championship. How much would you pay a year to have all five majors plus a bunch of uh, uh, the playoffs plus like a couple a couple like regular season tournaments that are big on 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 a, on a players only channel? How much would you pay? Uh, I mean, as a, as, a, as a huge golf fan, I probably pay probably pay like a hundred bucks a year. I give up a hundred bucks a season for that. I would be. I probably pay, depending on depending on who the players are, right? You have to know who True. the people are. True. Um, True. But obviously, I mean, you probably pay. I mean, what do we play? What What do we pay for ESPN Plus? We probably pay. We pay eight eight bucks or something a month. Yeah, it's like right, like eight or that. seven. So eight times, so yeah, that, twelve times. Yeah, yeah. So it's almost. It's kind of the same. So. So as a, so then uh, just to finish. Uh, just to finish this quote from Phil, uh, he continues. He says, uh, if I have access to my own channel and access to my own media, I would have a camera and microphone on my hat and on, yep. my, ca- and on my brother's hat. His brother's obviously his caddy. Uh, yep. And on my golf bag with a 360 view. And I would bring the viewers in. They would see and hear what is going on. But none of that happens currently because yep. why would any player do that? To make more millions for the tour? They already make enough. Tour how only understands leverage, and now the players are getting some of that. Some of that. So things are changing and will continue to change. I just hope the leverage doesn't go away. If it does, we'll be back to the status quo. Obviously, when he says the leverage, he's talking about uh, the, the the Saudi Super Golf League. So, uh, so him and Deshambo, Deshambo declined to host a press conference following his first round over in Saudi. Uh, I wonder why. Um, <laughs> uh, he so he didn't comment on the report of getting 135 million dollars to be the face of this league. 
And uh, one, one thing that's interesting is that we and we talked about this earlier today uh, in our pre-show get together. Uh, what what players, uh, you know, in order to make this this Saudi Super Golf League interesting to 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 fans and most notably us, you know, what what kind of players would it, would it take to to go over there? Then what would those players also be sacrificing? Right. Like what? Who, who's go, who's going to be the hook to get us in? So right now that apparently they're seeking to get Deshambo to be the face of it. They've reached out to Mickelson. They've reached out to Lee Westwood, who apparently signed a or who? Well, not apparently. He said he signed a non disclosure agreement, yep. which basically, I mean, uh, as far as I can understand, and I'm not a lawyer, that basically means he's been in negotiations with them, and maybe perhaps something could be happening. They offered yeah, uh, Ian Poulter thirty million to now if. Pulitzer takes it and less in Westwood, uh, they would have to re- relinquish their Ryder Cup status. And obviously, we know the Ryder Cup means a ton to those guys. And both of them are probably in line to be captain at some point within the next. Yeah, got to be, got to be within so. the next like ten uh, in the so, next right. ten to five to ten years. You five, know? five, probably even five years. Yeah, you're right. Um, so yeah, five what, to ten years, maybe. So, so what? So, so what? What do you what? What do you think it would take? What What is the guy that says, "Okay, this is legit"? Or this is. I mean, you gotta. Is the you gotta. You gotta guy? think. Well, like, like we, like we, like we talked. We talked about earlier. I think that. I think Phil's a little, a little ambitious, but not, not quite so ambitious. It's a weird. It's a weird situation because, like we talked about earlier, I think Phil. Phil is. I don't think Phil's good enough to play on the PGA anymore. I think that, I mean, aside from his insane, uh, his insane uh, uh, showing at Kiowa, but I don't think that, um, I think he's too good for the champions, but not good enough for PGA. So maybe this, maybe this, um, this Saudi thing might be good. Uh, it's only if they get the right talent there. Um. Um, he, he, he absolutely dust the competition in the champions league. So that's kind of out. And he's not good to put enough to play on the PGA. They need, they need to get Phil as like maybe the ambassador and a bunch of players that are just under him, maybe like a Lee Westwood, maybe an Ian Poulter, maybe a, a Graham McDowell or, you know, something like that in order to keep people in order to get people hooked and keep people hooked, you know? Yeah, I think I'm not sure if Bryson DeChambeau does it for them, but it certainly. I don't. Could. I don't think so, man. I think he's so wrapped up. I mean, I mean, 135 mil. I mean, that's <laughs> 135 cake up front. That's insane. Like you said, that's more than Tiger's made on the tour. Um, I, I, I don't think his competitive nature would let. I, I don't think his competitive nature would let him take that, given the fact that of who he is, what he made himself into. I mean, he's already a major champion. He's got, he's got, um, what's it called? Uh, endorsements out the butt. Um, I, I, I don't, I, I, I just don't see him doing it. I mean, if they, if they somehow get him, I mean, the sky's the limit for this tour. I mean, that he's a top, he's a top 10 player. So I'm not really sure what, I'm not really sure what, what Bryson's thinking is here. Well, I mean, again, he, Declined to comment in his press conference after the first round of the Saudi invitation, which, if you weren't sure, got underway early this morning. At like, I think Golf Channel picked up coverage at like 3 a.m. or something. Then they continued coverage at like 6 a.m. I, I actually watched the last uh, about half hour of it or so. Uh, but if you want to watch that, that's on TV as well. Uh, we'll get into that. We'll get into that uh, some of that later. But uh, just. Uh, you know, what is the PGA Tour now? You know, their response. Obviously, they've. They threatened to ban players from participating in the majors. Augusta's done the same thing. The USJ has done the same thing. Uh, so, if any of these guys, whether it's Shambo or I mean, Mickelson, like he said, is he's kind of washed up anyways. But he did he did acknowledge that if he somehow wins the U.S. Open at Brookline, he would probably just retire. Uh, given his history in the U.S. Open, I don't think he's going to win it. But that's just me. Uh, no, I, Brookline's Brookline's tough. I mean, obviously Kiowa's tough. I mean, he he pretty much caught that course at like the perfect time. There wasn't an incredible amount of men 
wind, sorry, um, especially with it being right on the ocean, um, hence the ocean course, obviously. Um, I think he caught it at the right time. He caught a groove, you know, he was playing great that whole uh, couple week stretch. Um, I don't think he, I don't think he sniffs anything at Brookline. Brookline's a really, really tough course, albeit it's landlocked. There's no, really no, um, no water or anything. Um, I think he, I mean, I mean, if I'm him, I should, I should seriously think about it. Um, given the fact, like I said, not great, not, not good enough to compete normally on the PGA tour and, um, dusting the competition in the champions. Maybe, maybe he needs to branch out and find something else. Do you think that eventually this is all going to get settled with the PGA tour and this Saudi golf league, which again is basically being run by Greg Norman. Uh, yeah. Do you think this is eventually going to get settled with some sort of agreement or some sort of uh, coming to Jesus moment, if you will, uh, yeah. where they decided to kind of put all this beside them? Um, because I feel like uh, there's a chance, and it could be the tour. It could, I mean, and who knows if this Saudi league is even going to get off the ground, right? That's that's part of the whole thing. Um, apparently, it seems. Like I mean, they they're, are, throw, they're throwing they're they're throwing around money like they share, uh, like they share, uh, they share. Uh, think it's going to get it's going to get off the ground but well they said they're willing to spend uh i think in the golf digest article they said that the 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 super golf league is willing to spend up to a billion dollars on like top <sighs> top ranked players and top you know top you know top name players so uh that's a lot of money um so yeah uh, do, do you think this is eventually going to have a come to jesus moment and it's all going to be kind of combined to into one type of uh Type of thing, kind of like it is now with the PGA Tour, the European Tour. This is just going to be another tour that you can kind of, kind of go play. You think it could have eventually? I mean, it doesn't seem like anytime soon, to be fair. <laughs> but do you think that <laughs> that, could, that could happen? You know, down the road. Yeah, absolutely. I think like like we talked about uh, during the day today. I think eventually, once and if this tour the saudi tour gets going like i said the train the train the train goes forward i think that the pga is gonna have to now granted give or take who they have um i think that they're gonna have to uh, throw out a number be like let's say let's say that the, the saudi tour has 25 events the pga is gonna have to let these guys play in five or 10 or t- like 12 events a year or like cap it at something, maybe 12 is too much, but um, they're going to have to let these guys play in, in another, in another league, whether it be the Saudi tour, whether it be the European, the DP tour, European tour, whatever it is, they have to, they have to give these guys a, an allotment of, of, um, of, uh, of tournaments to play in besides the PGA tour. If, in fact, this tour does get off the ground running, you know what I mean. It, it should most certainly be interesting. Again, uh, other other players that appears that these the Super Golf League is going after include uh, Ian Poulter, who's reportedly uh, offered thirty million. Uh, Lee Westwood, who we mentioned signed the non disclosure agreement, and uh, Dustin Johnson was also asked about it, and he kind of <laughs> danced, <laughs> he kind of danced around the comment as well. So. Uh, as I thought at the beginning of the week, uh, I thought this would be a fascinating week in professional golf. It certainly has. And, you, to, and let me let me cut that. you off real quick. And these guys, and these guys, you got to remember that these guys, these guys take that money. Bryson takes the hundred and thirty-five million. That's up front. That's like a that's like a signing bonus to them. If the if the if the tour if the if this tour doesn't happen, that's in their pocket, and they go and they could possibly go back to the. PGA Tour, and if not, if the PGA Tour doesn't let them back in, it's whatever. I'm 140 million dollars richer. Who cares? Absolutely. So it's going to be. <laughs> it's continue. crazy. It, the, the money, the money's insane. It's going to continue to be fascinating. I'm sure more stories will come out over the next couple of days. Again, we're, I say, only at Thursday, but golf tournament wise, we're only at Thursday, and there's still three more rounds of each tournament to go. I don't expect much to come out of the. 
the, the Pebble Beast tournament, the according to Golf Digest, the PGA yeah. Tour did not comment on the Mickelson comments or on any of the other situations that are going on, but certainly you would expect something to come out of uh, the Saudi, something more to come out of the Saudi golf tournament. Uh, that's just my guess. We'll see what happens. We'll have to uh, keep an eye on that uh, throughout the night and into, obviously, you know, the weekend. So uh, certainly a fascinating thing going on there. Again, a fascinating time to be to be covering this stuff. And uh, as I predicted, it was going to be an amazing week um, because there's so much storylines. And that Mickelson thing was a bombshell last night. So... <laughs> Uh, that's certainly, well, I mean, this this Brooks thing, this though. Brooks thing is kind of a bombshell just as we got on the air, you know. Yeah, he made the the only thing is he made. I, I'll be interested to see if is he even playing this week. If he, I'd be interested. Uh, to, I don't think so. No, I'd, I'd be interested to see if a reporter or somebody follows up with him uh, whenever we see him again, because that'd be interesting to see him actually. And I'm sure he Let will. Let me see. I'm gonna look. I'm gonna look right now. I don't think he is, but I don't think he. I don't think he is either. That's why he was commenting on social media, um, but. It'd be interesting to see if a reporter follows up with him in, in his next tournament. I, I don't know if the is the next tournament the Genesis. I'm sure. I'm, I I'm yeah, sure, Riviera, right? Yeah, I'm sure he's playing that. Um, uh, so, Max, Max Homa, defending champion, not a big deal. True. Um, sure. yeah, no, uh, I don't. He's not. I don't well, think he's playing he, this week. No, like I'm not, not seeing it on the. Uh, no. Yeah, so it'll be interesting to see when. When and if a reporter follows up with him on that on that comment, because I mean, I think these Mickelson, especially the Mickelson comments again, the Shambo didn't comment, so you're gonna go off yeah. this report. And uh, so, where where are you? Where are you on the whole like Brooks Brooks being Brooks thing? Are you in favor of it as far as like the as far as like the the the, the PGA Tour is concerned, or are you like he should stop being a d bag and just play golf? I mean, I'm, I I love it. I love the fact that he's kind of a little bit of a d bag. I think that I mean, he's obviously got the skills to back it up. He's got multiple multiple major championships. Um, I like the fact that he calls people out. I like the fact that he talks crap. I like the fact that you know, I didn't really like the fact that the, the whole the whole Bryson thing. I thought that was a little bit a little bit overblown and like fake. But um, I do like the fact that he like tries to call people out on crap and plays with a I I I don't give a crap attitude. What, what, what do you think about that? Yeah, well, uh, I'm not into his blonde hair. I think that looks like crap. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like a Q-tip, no? <laughs> but, I'm not into his I'm not into his blonde hair. But listen, uh... let's just let's just be real for a second, okay? We're in the golf media business. We're in the yep. content business, so I'm pretty much in for anybody Fantastic. that I'm down. presents content. <laughs> and Brooks Kepka, generally speaking, now some of it's stupid. But generally yeah. speaking, Brooks Kapka presents content, so I like him. <laughs> keep, yeah. keep it going. Now I think the match. I mean, was, I, like like I said, the, the like match I, said, I don't disaster, like I don't like the but short of that. shit. I don't think I don't think I like the I didn't like the match the match stuff in Vegas with all. I think that was, that was I disaster. think that was fake. That was a disaster. But yes. but um but no I I genuinely like his crap talking I I D G A F attitude, um I I I I like it I think it's good for the game and I and as long as he like like quasi backs it up, meaning makes gets gets a bunch of top tens during the year, or maybe even a couple top fives. I'm down for it. I'm all down for it. Yeah, no, I mean I love it. It's great. Keep going. Hopefully it does more. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and hopefully if we get the press transfers to Brookline we can interview and we can we can poke the oh, bear. Oh dude, how amazing <laughs> would that be? And hopefully <laughs> we, we can poke the bear. So listen, yep. as I say, I'm in the content business. I'm all about golf, love golf. You know, love playing it. Want to do try to help grow golf locally, but at the end of the day, we're in the business of content. So, <coughs> Brooks Kepka, as far as his trash talk goes, is good for t- good for content. So now his blonde hair again is terrible, but other than that, he's good for content. So I'm all for it. Keep going. Uh, so uh, two PJ t- two professional golf tournaments going on this weekend, as you we mentioned, the PJ Tour at Pebble Beach. And also, uh, obviously, the Saudi, which is what everyone is talking about. There are also a couple of local things going on. A big snow golf tournament at King's Crossing. And Davis Chatfield tees it up tomorrow in the first tournament of the spring season for Notre Dame. So I want to get to uh, both of those things. And obviously, this will be on the table for the rest of the show. Obviously, we got to a late start due to computer issues. 
Um, but we will go a little bit longer, so I want to hit on these things. So we're going to hit on all of that. King's Crossing, Davis Chatfield, and more professional golf talk right after this commercial break. This is the Golf Dudes Podcast, and we'll see you in just a minute. Uh, Billy Andre joins the show. Billy, thanks so much for doing this, and uh, we appreciate yeah. you taking the time. Well, thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm, I'm excited. I'm very excited to be joined by an 11-time Emmy Award winner, and that is Armin Katayan. Our Massachusetts women's amateur champion, Allison Pake. The, the days of the country club just being golf and maybe one amenity are gone. Uh, un- unfortunately, Metacomet didn't, doesn't have those. He has a very rare, uh, very rare condition called Kyphal scoliotic ehlers danlos Syndrome. And at the time of diagnosis, there was only 60 documented cases in the world. I mean, we legitimately played the last four holes at Newport National. You could not see 50 yards. And welcome back to the Golf Dudes Podcast presented by Lynx Drinks. Lynx Drinks is best known for their transfusion in a can. Transfusion is vodka, ginger ale, and grape juice all mixed up into one refreshing beverage. Look for Lynx Drinks at country clubs and liquor stores near you. This is the Golf Dudes Podcast on Facebook Live and also on the Coalition Radio Network. Make sure you follow us, uh, golfnewsri.com. We just, this earlier this week, we uh, quote-unquote partnered uh, with Linktree uh, to have all of our links and all of our uh, content in one place. So uh, check us out on Linktree. The link is in our bio on every single social media platform. It's also in my personal bio. So make sure you check check that out. Uh, follow us on uh, Instagram, Twitter, obviously the website, and even my even the YouTube page is up there. So it's really my personal YouTube page, but either way, it still counts. Uh, so check us out on Linktree. It's pretty cool, pretty cool thing uh, that was invented in an easy way to follow us on all of our platforms. Obviously, we do. Uh, a lot of our content is the same on each platform, but certainly, especially during the season, uh, some content will be different because it's di- better for different content is better for different platforms. So uh, make sure you follow us on all of our platforms again: Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. All right, so we uh, went into the break talking about the PGA Tour versus the Saudi International, the Saudi Super Golf League. I think it's fascinating, and both of those terms are running. In as we speak, PGA Tour, I think, just finished over at Pebble Beach for the day. Um, not can't be too lo- that long ago. Uh, within the last probably a couple of hours, I would guess. And then, obviously, the Saudi International the first round finished, obviously, this morning. Uh, so uh, why don't we do this, Rich? Let's, uh, let's give the folks what they want, uh, kind of a generic rundown of the leaderboard. If you can do uh, each turn, I have the leaders in front of me. I can also help you out. Uh, with one of the two if you need it. And then we'll kind of get into some of that. And also we have some uh, some quick local notes uh, to to get to as well. All right, yeah, I got the um, I got Pebble Beach up. Um, now, uh, if you guys don't know, um, they're playing they're playing all three Pebble courses, which is Pebble, Spyglass and uh, Mon- the Monterey Peninsula Club. Um, so they're splitting up the field between all three courses. Now it's a pro-am, so they have, um, an extended amount, uh, in the, in the field this week. Um, they're obviously keeping track of the pros and the amateurs, um, and a separate thing. So for the, for the pros, obviously that's all anybody cares about. Um, we got Tom Hoagie, uh, who played the Pebble Beach course, uh, leading at nine under, um, Jonas Blix um blast from the past uh he's at seven under uh, patrick Cantlight six under tied for fifth he also he played the monterey peninsula course uh we're gonna i'm just gonna run down these now um sean o'hare blast from the past five under uh doc redmond five under um scott stallings billy haas um five under uh let me scroll down hang on um See, uh, Bo Van Pelt, where you been? Four under. Jason Day, four under. Hopefully he can um, play a little bit better. Hopefully the weather cooperate, cooperates with him. He had a great uh, week at Torrey Pines last week. Um, Troy Merritt, 
Um, Peter Malinati, uh, Kevin Streelman, all at four under. Uh, let's see what we got. What else we got? Um, geez. Uh, your boy, Peter Uline, he played the Monterey Peninsula course. He's at three under. Um, Matt Fitzpatrick, three under. Um, Jordan Spieth, three under. He played the Monterey Peninsula course. Um, Kevin Kisner, two under. Monterey. Uh, Charlie Hoffman, uh, Spyglass Hill, two under. Pat Perez, he had that... Um, he had a great uh, last round at Torrey Pines last week. He played Pebble Beach today. He's two under. Jimmy Walker, two under. Nick Watney, two under. Um, there's a lot. That, I mean, it, I'm, I'm only halfway down the list right now. Um, let's let's go down to the end. Let's see who uh, who brought up the rear. Um, uh, Tom Lehman. He was three over at the Pebble Beach course. Um, the last place is sitting at nine uh, at nine under, seven under, six under. I mean, six over, sorry. Um, but it looks like a lot of these guys are uh, Lucas Glover. Uh -oh, wife's going to get mad at him. He's three over. Um, Charles Schwartzel, he's plus, he's over, he's two over. So, yeah. So, it looks like, it looks like, um, the Monterey Peninsula, meaning Pebble Spyglass and the Monterey Peninsula Peninsula, Peninsula course, is uh, looking like it's playing uh, it's playing pretty pretty medium to like decent. Um, There's the scores out there. Um, hopefully, hopefully the um, the wind won't uh, the wind won't affect it too much. As we know, we that 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 uh, Pebble can blow like twenty or thirty over and um, just absolutely wreck scores. So, what do you got? What do you got for the uh, for the overnight uh, Saudi scores? So the, the Saudi scores are, for those that didn't watch it, I think Golf Channel picked up coverage again at like 3 a.m. Uh, I'm not sure what time they pick up the coverage uh, tonight, but there's a chance I may or may not be up, for at least the start of it. <laughs> anyway, anyway, anyways, um, I'm just going to hit I'm just gonna hit the players that people know. I'll be honest. I have these people. I don't think anyone's going to know who they are. If I don't know who they are, <laughs> our viewers don't know who they are. <laughs> um, no offense. It's just the facts. Uh, Mateo Manacero is in first place at eight under after the first round. Um, Sam Horsfield is tied for second at six under. Uh, Americans, Harold Varner the third is at six under. HV3. Your boy Bubba Watson is at six under. Ooh, uh, Bubba. Yeah, he showed up. And uh, Dustin Johnson is at five under and tied for seventh. If I scroll down real quick again, I'm just trying to grab. There's other people here. You don't even know who these people are. Uh, so I'm just scrolling down. Joachim Neiman and Matthew Wolf are also tied for seventh at five under. Tommy Fleetwood is at four under. Um, oh, Jason Kokrak with an appearance. He's at four there under. There we go. With Patrick Reed, Cameron Smith, Henrik Stenson out of nowhere. Um, and something, oh, wow. And something named Todd Bake. Todd Bake is at three under. Apparently he's an American. <laughs> Todd Bake. Um, <laughs> something named. Terrell has it. Uh, Terrell has it three under, and he had, and he's one under on club throws for the day. As I watched that live, he th threw a club today. So that was fun. Um, nice. Something named Barry Henson is at three under. He's an American. <laughs> <laughs> and and some interest. Oh, a lot of interesting guys at three under. Philip is at three under as a trash mm -hmm. at the PGA Tour. Xander Shawfley is at three under. So do we do we have a, uh, we have a cut? Was there, what was the Finau? cut? Well, they're only through round one. Wait, so wait. they're only through round one. I thought. Wait, what's tonight? Wednesday? Oh yeah, yeah, round one. Yep, tonight. Tonight's the second round. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, who? Uh, Kevin Na is not doing too well. He's even par. Uh, um, who's in last place? Oh, uh, oh, something. I don't. I'm not even probably pronouncing it. How about you said something? I love it. Yeah. <laughs> something, something new. <laughs> and I, I couldn't even tell you from uh, tied for uh, 85th on. I couldn't even tell you what these guys', guys names were, so I'm not even going to try. But Thomas Peters is three over and is near the bottom. Graham McDowell is struggling. He's at three over. Uh, Bryce what are we, are we looking Bryce at DeChambeau. the, uh, the are, are we sure? Are, are we sure Bryson DeChambeau wants to play in the Saudi Tour? Because he's three over and tied for 85th. Uh, so he's not going to do too well. Jesus. So uh, not up to good. Oh, your boy Jason Duff, the big Duff daddy, 
He's strong. Big too. Daddy Duff. She puts some more shit in his mouth. <laughs> so, um, no, it's the Public Investment Fund Saudi International. That's, oh, okay, I'm looking at I'm looking you, at a different one. I'm on the if you're GP, on, if you're GP on, website. If, if you're on GolfChannel.com, on the left, okay, they have the leaderboards. Yeah, you, you gotta change the leaderboard. It's the Public Investment Fund Saudi International. That's the one that I was looking at. Um, oh, that's weird. I'm on the I'm on the European Tour website. It doesn't even have that one. Okay, no, just go to golf, GolfChannel.com. It's on your left. Find golf channel website. Um, anyway, uh, so that there's your two leaderboards for the big uh, major tournaments that are going on. Uh, and real quick, I just wanted to get to some of the local stuff. Obviously, not a ton going on as we've uh, as we've talked about. But uh, Kings Crossing is hosting their second annual Super Bowl Sunday Snow Golf Tournament. We got pictures last year, due to courtesy of our guy Peter Walsh. It looked like a pretty fun time. Uh, North Kingstown was a long way to drive for me and. Was it in a yeah? Because I, like, I I love I love my club and I love Peter and I love Rob and everything. Not happening, just not happening. Last year, the, the pictures looked like a lot of fun last year. I will. Say. Oh no, it did, it did. <laughs> but the, I just snow, I hate the snow. The snow field Ugh, goals look no. kind of funny. Could look kind of funny. Yeah. But anyways, besides the point, uh, Kings Crossing <laughs> hosting a snow golf tournament this year. The tournament takes place on Super Bowl Sunday. It's a nine hole shotgun start at one p.m. Format is a two player scramble and is walking. Only so, make sure you carry the bag or bring a sled, like somebody did last year in the China. It was pretty. Well, I mean, I mean that, that Peter Peter said that was the one that was the thing that uh, that was the best. Just bring a sled. Don't bring a uh, don't bring a uh, pull cart or anything. Just bring a sled. And uh, if people want to sign up, you're asked to sign up through Kings Crossing Golf Club through or through golf at kingscrossinggolfclub.com or just simply call the club, tell them that you know Rich Capali, and they will immediately <laughs> kick you out. Um, so there's that. That's next week. We'll preview that again next week. I'm not sure when signups end. I'm sure they'll be open throughout the week. Uh, but we'll get we'll talk about that a little bit more next week as well. Uh, and again, last week, last year uh, on Super Bowl Sunday, again there was a blizzard, like literally like a blizzard, taking place at the <laughs> at the time. So it was legit snow yep. elf. Um, and uh, so last year, Peter sent me sent us some great pictures to post. We posted in a slideshow, and it, was, it actually looked kind of fun. I'm not saying I would necessarily want to do it. It just looks fun. Anyway, and also tomorrow on the college golf scene, because college golf is back, and we've been back following the PGA Tour University rankings. Um, and uh, next, tomorrow, Davis Chatfield tees up in the Jones Cup Invitational at 10.30 a.m. Chatfield is now 72nd in the PGA Tour University rankings. He moved up three spots this week, so we'll keep an eye on that leaderboard as well. And it's going to good luck to him. And what's probably going to be, well, what is going to be his final college golf season, perhaps his final final few months as an amateur, because uh, I'm hearing that the plan is to turn pro. I believe that he wants one more shot at the Northeast Amateur at his home course, um, but I believe the plan is to turn pro for him, So, uh, and for us others as well. So it uh, should be interesting, but again, Davis Chatfield tomorrow morning at 10.30 a.m. Golf News Radio will have all the coverage as always, and also Will Dixon plays next week in the Florida Elite Tour uh, in the second pro tournament of the year. And uh, in case you're curious, the first place prize for next week's tournament for our good buddy Will Dixon is a mere $25,000. First place it's prize. All? First place prize. Huh, for playing <laughs> golf. Okay. So there you have it. Uh, that is what's going on some of the local stuff. And obviously, as we said, uh, lots of stuff going on in professional golf. Again, one of the more fascinating weeks in professional golf in a while. Um, probably since probably since the Ryder Cup. I mean, not that that's saying much, but the Ryder Cup's always fascinating. So, and we have Bay Hill coming up. Uh, super excited next week. We actually, one of our guy is down at uh, Bay Hill. Our course review is down at Bay Hill, so he's sending us a course review of Bay Hill. He already sent me the pictures because he's playing it multiple times apparently. Uh, and they look amazing, so that'll be fun. And then uh, some other things coming up as well that we're excited about. And it's February. February is a short month, generally. And then we get into March, and in theory, things will be starting in March. Obviously, high school golf season is coming up. I think that's going to be a, a fascinating year as well. And obviously, we have all the other tournaments coming up uh, you know, very in short order. So that's what's going on locally, and obviously – Continue our coverage of PGA Tour stuff and lead and lead up to uh, 
U.S. Open, U.S. Open qualifiers, uh, U.S. Women's Open qualifier, which, by the way, is at Worcester Country Club, historic Worcester Country Club. And mm. that's and that's where we are. So, uh, Mr. Rich, it should be a fun weekend of content if the last day or two were any indication. I know you were texting me a bunch of links, and I was trying to figure out, okay, let's write this. Uh, we don't need to write this. I mean, no one... I don't think anybody locally cares about Ian Poulter, but it was fascinating. I did include it in, in the other stories, obviously. Um, and if the last two days for any education, hopefully we get, we get more stuff. Again, I'm all about the content, and whatever is good for content is perfectly fine with me. And uh, it should be an interesting weekend of events to see how this uh, uh, plays out on both, on both sides. I think it is crazy that nobody, none of the top players are playing at Pebble Beach and everybody is over in the, the Saudi tournament, probably because their appearance fee is much higher than it is at Pebble Beach. Yeah, absolutely. I yep. just think the whole situation is fascinating. We'll continue to cover. I think it's one of the biggest storylines in all the professional golf. Uh, again, if you haven't listened to the interview with Bob Harrig uh, that we had uh, a month or two ago, uh, he talked about it. Uh, it was pretty, pretty good stuff, and he really – did a good job of painting the picture for us because neither of us really understood exactly how it all works. Phil further paints the picture while trashing the PGA Tour uh, while he was at it, and now Brooks Kepka is going back at him, uh, and it'll be interesting to see if there's more fallout from that again. I'm interested to see uh, when Brooks Kepka uh, plays his next tournament, whatever that is, whether it's next week or uh, whatever, if, uh, if and when he's asked about it, if he further... Further goes back at Phil, so I think that would be interesting. Nothing like a good rivalry. Uh, so, and Brooks Kepka is certainly not afraid to start one, as we see. So, uh, this is the Golf Dudes Podcast. I think that's all we got. I don't know, Rich, if you have you have anything else? you have anything else you want to share? Any more in, uh, stuff coming up? So, uh, this, No, I'm good. This is the Golf Dudes Podcast. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We're going to get out of here here now for the rest of the night and the rest of the weekend. Uh, stay tuned to Golf News Ride all weekend long again. PGA Tour content at Pebble Beach. We have the Saudi stuff, and obviously the, the, the back and forth between the two, again, is just, I think it's amazing. And again, the last two days, our education, it's going to be quite a weekend of, of some content. Hopefully these guys actually say something in their press conferences. Other than that, follow us on all of our social media platforms. Again, just click on the link tree. It's very easy. It takes you right to the page uh, for Instagram, Twitter, uh, even YouTube if you want. And uh, obviously, golfmusicride.com. Sign up for the e blast. And we will talk to you next week, Super Bowl week. So we'll have our Super Bowl predictions. I know Rich is already looking at the betting lines. Uh, so we'll have, oh, our, of course. we'll have our Super Bowl predictions next week. And obviously, whatever else other go- golf content uh, we have uh, uh, when, that, when that takes place. So thanks to everybody for following along. Uh, we're looking forward to a, a, a fun year, fun summer of golf coverage and projects and different things. So thanks, everybody, for uh, sticking with us. It's February. Golf season is almost here. Just count down the days. This is the Golf Dudes Podcast. Have a great weekend, everybody. Peace.